So I'm going to show you how to make my spring greens kimchi. It's so easy to make and I think every kitchen cupboard or fridge should have a jar. So starting off with a brine. So I've got a litre of hot water here and then into that I'm going to dissolve four teaspoons of salt to make the brine. And the thing about kimchi is you can really adapt it to your favourite seasonal veggies. So I'm using lots of spring greens here, but later on in the year you could use different things as they come into season. So I've got some cabbage, so I've got a whole um, sort of fairly pale greeny cabbage. Napa cabbage is good, you could use spring greens. And I've just chopped this roughly so it's, it's kind of like the coleslaw texture. So I'm going to add that to my brine and then give that a good mix. And then I'm also going to add some chopped carrot. I've got a couple of chopped carrots. And you want them to be in sort of fairly small pieces. It comes out a bit like a chutney. So if you've never made kimchi before, what we're doing is we're making a fermented relish that is packed full of good gut bugs, particularly the bifido type of gut bugs. We hear a lot about the lactobacillus gut bugs. They come really more from your fermented dairy products like kefir and yogurt. But we also need to have a good selection of bifido gut bugs. And we get these from things like sauerkraut and kimchi. And anybody who has traveled across the Far East will know that kimchi is just like a staple. You have it on the side of virtually everything. Uh, into that, I'm also going to add some radishes Lovely, bright red radishes, really good. Seasonal, really healthy, really tasty. They give a nice crunchy tang. So I've got a nice little handful of radishes there that I have just chopped to add into my kimchi. So mix that all in, it's really colorful too. You know, you can make jars of this and you can keep it for months and you can give it as gifts. You know, and just always have a jar of it on the table. You know, if there's always a bit around, you can add it to a baked potato, you can add a spoonful to a cheese sandwich. You know, I mean, it's incredibly versatile. And you can really make it as spicy as you like. Traditionally, kimchi is quite spicy. It's got quite a lot of chili. For me, I'm not a massive chili fan, so I go easy on the chili, but it's up to you really how spicy you want to make it. So the next little stage is going to be mixing together all my kind of seasonings. So I've got here a small bunch of spring onions. That's about five chopped spring onions there. And then I'm going to add to that some garlic. So I've got some crushed garlic, quite a lot of garlic. I've got four cloves of crushed garlic there. I'm going to add that to the spring onions. So you can already get an idea of the, of the tanginess because of course you don't use very much kimchi. We're really only using a small spoonful at a time, so you can afford to overload the flavors. Then I'm going to use some ginger. This is a generous knob of ginger here that I have finely chopped or grated. Ginger, good little hack actually, is to put it through a, a garlic press if you want to find an easy way to, to chop or shred ginger. So mix those together with some of the extra spices. And this is where it can get a bit serious, depending on what you want to add. Now, purists would obviously add quite a lot of fresh chopped chili. These are not my favorite things. So I am gonna go easy on the chili. I'm going to use a sprinkling of the hot chili powder instead, just to give it a bit of seasoning. I can already hear the purists saying, oh, you've got to have chopped chilli and kimchi. Well, this is one that doesn't have it in, but by all means, be my guest if you want to add a bit of chopped chilli. Then what you also need to add is some apple cider vinegar. So I've got some live apple cider vinegar here, and I'm going to add two tablespoons of that to my mixture. So two tablespoons. If you're using apple cider vinegar, try and buy the stuff that says it contains the mother, the mother culture. So that is the live version. Because again, it's all about the prebiotic and the probiotic goodness. Getting those good gut bugs proliferating in our microbiome. Now, if you want to recap on the ingredients, you'll find the link to the recipe below. So you can click the little URL that links you to Liz Our Wellbeing. That's the mothership for all my recipes, and you'll find a whole section actually on gut health. 
So I've now got my spicy mixture, which I am going to add to my general cabbage and veggie mixture. And you know, throughout the year, I make this with all sorts of different things. You can chop up green beans, you can use broccoli, you can leave leeks, you can use celeriac, you can use fennel, that works really well. You know, any, any that you want. And the idea is that you really mix it up well. Some people actually put on a pair of like plastic gloves, the catering gloves or the um, clinical gloves and give this a good massage because you want to get all those flavors really mixing in well. So I'm gonna give it a good pounding here with my wooden spoon. And then I'm gonna pop this into a kilner jar because you want it to ferment. So a kilner jar is good because you can release the air. You can kind of pop the lid off and, and burp the gases as they gather, because you do want it to ferment. Just check that that's all in there. Yep, lovely. That is all there. You want a little bit of the liquid still there in the jar with the goodness. So I'll get my jar here. And I mean, you could use a different jar. You could just cover it with a cloth, for example, if you wanted to put an elastic band over it. So let's see if I can get this into here. So I have got a big jar. And what you want to do is really try and pack it down as much as you can. You can use smaller jars, obviously, but just make sure that they are filled and packed. It's quite therapeutic, actually, filling your jars. And this amazing colour, you're really seeing the, the shades of the orange carrot, you've got the red of the radish, you've got the dark and the pale green of the cabbage, and the dark and the light of the spring onion. Oops, all going in there. And you know, you really, as I say, as you, as you put it in the jar, press it down, because you want it to be packed down. It's amazing actually how much the vegetables do do shrink down. Let's see if I can tip some of this liquid in. And then grab some more of the veggies. Smell is great. It's smelling a bit like an Asian kitchen in here. All that lovely garlic and ginger, a little bit of the chili. And then some people will add other favorite things. You could add seeds if you wanted. Some people flavour it with cumin or fenugreek or poppy seeds. You know, I'm sure every Asian household probably has their own family secret kimchi recipe that's handed down through the generations. So I'm packing that down as I go. You want the liquid just to be covering it so it's not too wet. The last few bits. And ideally, if you can, you can use a weight to weight it down, to weight down the lid, just to keep the pressure on. Or you can just keep pressing it down with a spoon. There we go. I don't want that to be too wet, so I'm actually going to tip off a little bit of the liquid now. Just to get the right amount, because you want it to be just about covered when you press it down. So that is now nicely pressed. So then I would seal that in the jar and put that somewhere to just sit and rest basically. You just got to leave it and it will do its work. It takes well, it depends really how strong you want it. It can be anything, you know, it can be ready in about three days, three to five days. The longer you leave it, the more it ferments, the stronger the flavours. And then you can keep it in the fridge. So it keeps really well in the fridge so that you can then stop the fermentation process, stop the flavours developing as well. So once it's reached the taste that you like, you can then refrigerate it and then use it by the spoonful on so many things. So that is my spring greens. Kimchi, I think it's a work of art. I hope you love it too.